Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam, and welcome back to Flick Connection, where in less time than you normally spend scrolling for something to watch, I'm going to tell you about 20 fantastic movies on Max that you've probably never seen or heard of. Even though I still think Max offers the best selection of premium movies, they also have a vast selection of lesser known hidden gem movies that I highly recommend. In this video, we're going to talk about 20 of them, starting with my number 20 pick, the House of Sand and Fog, easily one of the most depressing movies on this list, but it's a good one. This stars Jennifer Connelly and Sir Ben Kingsley, and it is high drama stuff. There's a bit of a dispute over who actually owns this particular dream house, and the two of them actually get involved in a pretty bitter dispute. And as dry as that sounds, this movie is pretty dynamite stuff. Obviously, they're both doing incredible jobs acting, but the story here is pretty powerful as well, and it is based on a best-selling book. If this sounds like you, A House of Sand and Fog is a high drama hidden gem on Max right now. Now, even though we don't get a lot of great westerns anymore, every now and then one comes along that's pretty standout. My next pick is a slow-paced western, but it's still kind of a beautiful one with some fantastic performances in Slow West. Michael Fassbender stars in this, and he carries it. He really makes this fantastic. Ben Mendelsohn plays a fantastic bad guy in this, as always. But Slow West has a very interesting look to it. It's almost got a little bit of a Wes Anderson vibe, a little. It feels just a touch unnatural, and I like it. I think it works for this movie and actually makes it pretty enjoyable. However, this one's really more for the art film crowd, indie movie lovers, or people who do truly love old-fashioned westerns. If it's been a while since you've seen a decent one, Slow West might be right up your alley. Now, as weird as my number 16 pick is, it's only the second weirdest movie on this list, but it's a fun one. It's called The Art of Self-Defense. This stars Jesse Eisenberg as a young man who is the victim of a violent crime. So it's not all funny. In fact, this is a pretty dark comedy, but he decides to take a self-defense class and he definitely goes to the wrong dojo in this movie. If you don't know, there are a lot of places where you can learn bogus martial arts. It's, it's a cottage industry, but this movie kind of focuses on that and deals with some pretty heavy themes as well, despite being this silly, dark comedy. Jesse Eisenberg is fantastic in this. If you've ever been a fan of his, this is one of the coolest, quirkiest little performances he's done, but the rest of the cast is really fantastic here as well. And like I said, the movie does deal with some pretty heavy themes fairly effectively, and it's still kind of silly and fun as well. Not really a knee slapper of a dark comedy, but still a clever one. This is your belt. It is yours, and it's sacred. There'll be a $15 charge to replace a lost belt. Now, my number 15 pick got criminally overlooked despite it having a stacked cast with Christian Bale, Casey Affleck, Woody Harrelson, Zoe Saldana, out of the Furnace still did not do well at the box office, but I consider it to be a top-notch drama. Out of the Furnace also stars Forrest Whitaker, Sam Shepard, and Willem Dafoe. Again, stacked cast. And this was filmed on location in Braddock, Pennsylvania, amid the declining steel industry. So there's a lot actually going on with this movie, yet the core story is actually fairly simple, which might be one of the reasons this got overlooked. But if you like grittier crime movies, this isn't quite one, but it's still going to scratch that itch. My number 14 pick is a great one for the art film crowd and has some of the best cinematography you're going to see on this entire list. And honestly, some of the best cinematography you could see on Max right now, which is really saying something with the movies they have to choose from. But Manos is only a few years old and it's gonna be hard to follow the story on this one for some of you because they don't hold your hand or really explain anything to you. This is almost as if a bystander with a keen eye for composition filmed something that's actually happening. And what you get with Manos is these child soldiers hiding out in the jungle, obviously as part of some drug ring, but you don't really get a crime movie with this one either. Rather, you get almost sort of a Lord of the Flies type of existence for these young kids that are living out in the jungle with machine guns really just as an outpost. This too deals with some pretty heavy things, but again, I cannot stress how stunning this movie is at times. There are moments that can be upsetting, but I would really relate this a lot to movies like Apocalypse Now. Believe it or not, 
It's not really the same type of movie, but it's filmed very much like it. And so I know movie buffs should really get a kick out of the way that this one was produced. And then my number 13 pick stars Val Kilmer, but it's one of those movies he did a little later in his career where he was really doing some pretty terrible low budget movies. If you don't know, he did a handful of them, but one that really stood out to me is titled Spartan. Where's the girl? Sir, we believe she was abducted, that she was taken to a bordello. Here in Boston? She may have been delivered for sale and sent down the pipeline and overseas to get to her father. One of the reasons Spartan is so excellent is it was actually written and directed by David Mamet, most famous for writing things like Glen Gary, Glenn Ross. So the script for Spartan actually has some teeth to it. And in this movie, he plays a special agent tasked with bringing back the kidnapped daughter of a high ranking US official. The supporting cast is fantastic and it all feels fairly real, especially for a lower budget drama. And honestly, the low budget doesn't even hold the movie back. It probably just held it back from getting a decent marketing budget, which really prevented a lot of people from seeing this movie. But if you typically like realistic espionage flicks like this, then Spartan is a top notch selection. Now, 10 points to anyone who noticed the multiple wardrobe changes so far in the video, and 100 points to anyone who guessed that, yes, I've got a bunch of new shirts available over at darrenvandam.com slash shop. I'll put a link in the video description or you can just go to darrenvandam.com and it's easy to find, but there's a ton of new designs over there. My wife and I designed all of these together. We actually went through a lot of trouble trying a bunch of different shirts, found the perfect 100% cotton Bella and canvas shirts that are the most comfortable shirts I own. This one being my particular favorite, I'll be wearing this one a lot. There are even some with designs on the back. And my wife and I spent way too much time designing these shirts together. We had a lot of fun doing it. So hopefully you see something over there that you like. But speaking of stuff that you might like, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. But my number 12 pick is easily the weirdest movie on this list. And quite honestly, one of the weirdest movies I think I've ever seen. It's titled Rubber. And it is about a murderous, tire. Yeah, there's no real big twist with this one either. It really is about a tire that's able to sort of murder people with its thoughts, and that's exactly what you get with rubber. If it looks or sounds remotely interesting to you, I can tell you it delivers. If it sounds like, what in the f why, why would I watch that? Then, do you <laughs> then don't watch this movie because it's exactly what I'm describing. And Surprisingly so, it's actually really well directed. In fact, that's almost what this movie is. It's part parody, spoof, but it's also kind of an experiment with filmmaking and the sense that it's making this dramatic movie work with just nothing but a vibrating tire. It's amazing how well it works. My next pick is an art film as well, but it's from 1973 and it's one of the first films from director Terrence Malick. He's famous for movies like The Tree of Life and The Thin Red Line, and he's most known for his breathtaking cinematography. In fact, most of his filmmaking is really just told visually. His stories in movies do very little to explain to you what's happening. They just show you. This stars Sissy Spacek and Martin Sheen. It takes place in the South Dakota Badlands and is almost a Bonnie and Clyde type of a story. Again, you're not getting high action with this movie. It's fairly slow paced, but Terrence Malick has just a real keen eye for always putting the camera in the right place. And his movies are some of the most beautiful ever made. This early one being no exception. In fact, it's also worth pointing out, I've recently recommended the movie Bones and All. It's available with Prime Video right now, or at least it is here in the US. And that movie, even though it's about cannibals, was very much inspired by the Badlands. When you watch both, there's no question. All right, now we're into my top 10 where we really start to have some bangers. My next pick being a sci-fi flick from the late 90s that is just still a dynamite gem with a pretty killer cast as well in Strange Days. I said late 90s, this came out in 95, but it does take place on New Year's Eve in 1999. And even though it's 1999, it takes place in the future. You understand how that works. And it's a future where virtual reality hasn't taken over, but it's become very powerful and has almost turned into a street drug. Ray Fiennes actually stars in this and he plays the, kind of the reluctant detective character. He's actually an ex-cop turned into a street hustler who discovers a conspiracy in Los Angeles on New Year's Eve. Juliette Lewis is fantastic in this, Angela Bassett, 
It's two and a half hours and my only real complaint with the movie is it feels a little over long in the last 20 minutes or so, but I could say that about a lot of movies, so it's a small complaint on an otherwise pretty cool 90s sci-fi flick. Okay, my number nine pick comes from the director of one of the weirdest, coolest flicks of all time, The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. But my number nine pick is a little known movie that he released several years after that that actually stars Jack Black and Most Deaf in Be Kind Rewind. Now in this movie, they run a video store that is in decline because video tapes are in decline. And when all of their VHS tapes get accidentally erased, they actually take to making copies of them by filming their own remakes. And these remakes, even though they're silly and have almost no budget to speak of, they're very charming and people end up loving them as much or more than the original movies. So this really becomes a movie lover's movie, particularly like 80s, 90s pop culture flicks. There's a lot of them in here. We're talking Robocop, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, all of those get referenced in this and it's really fantastic stuff. Obviously Jack Black is as good as he always is, but he and Most Def actually have quite a bit of chemistry in this movie, surprisingly so. I'm actually really kind of stunned this movie didn't get more popular than it was. But if you were raised on video stores like I was, then this is going to be one of your new favorites. Now we've got a Steve McQueen movie next up on the list and it's a fantastic one, but just not one of his more popular movies despite the fact that they remade it in the 90s. The Getaway. Now for 1972, The Getaway is a really cool flick, like all Steve McQueen movies, but in this movie he plays an ex-con released from prison, and when his next heist goes wrong, he and his wife have to go on the run. Now they did do a fantastic remake with Alec Baldwin and his then wife, Kim Basinger, Michael Madsen's in that one, Jennifer Tilly. It's really a great remake. You can actually catch that on a bunch of platforms right now, like Tubi, Roku, and Freebie. But the original is still dynamite stuff, and it is included on Max right now. Now we're at my number seven pick, and Slow West was not the only Western featured on this list. In fact, my next pick is not only one of the better Westerns released in the 21st century so far, it also happens to be one of the most underrated, despite it having a spectacular cast in Appaloosa. I don't kill people. I enforce the law. This was actually written by, directed by, and stars Ed Harris. You've also got Viggo Mortensen, Renee Zellweger, and Jeremy Irons in this flick. And this feels like a classic Western movie. And with an R rating in 2008, it's got a little bit of a harder edge than most classic Westerns, but not by a lot. In fact, if you're a fan of true blue classic Westerns and somehow you've never seen Appaloosa, this is gonna be one of your new favorites. You afraid to die? I ain't afraid. Good, because you go first. My next pick is a Christopher Nolan level sci-fi movie that far too few people saw, Source Code. Sean, Sean. Look, I can see that you think you know me, but I don't know who you are. My name is Captain Coulter Stevens. You're kind of freaking me out. In this movie, Jake Gyllenhaal actually plays a soldier who continuously wakes up in someone else's body on a train. Very much like a Groundhog Day situation. But the twist that gets revealed early on in the movie is that he's actually part of an experiment trying to stop a disaster from happening. It's got a very interesting and elegant sci-fi setup that they exploit throughout the entire story. So that's really not a spoiler. Again, it's the twist they give you early on. But Source Code makes fantastic use, again, of that simple concept and makes for a really tense thriller, especially considering it's got a PG-13 rating. This one has some teeth to it. And sorry to all the longtime subscribers. I really do appreciate you watching almost every video. I know I've recommended my next pick a few times recently, but it has only recently appeared on streaming services and it's one of my favorite action-packed thrillers to recommend on the channel, Running Scared, starring Paul Walker easily one of his most underrated movies. This too is a movie lover's movie. There's quite a few John Wayne references that are pretty dynamite in this as well. Style just oozing out of every single pore in this movie. 
In fact, there definitely is style over substance in this movie, but there's quite a bit of substance as well. It's a pretty intense story. And it deals with some heavy themes in a very colorful, sort of dazzling way that you would not expect, yet the movie is just thoroughly entertaining. If you typically like action-packed crime movies, Running Scared is an amazing one that, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's got some plot holes in it, but the director here, Wayne Kramer, steps on the gas early on in the movie and does not let go until the credits roll, literally. My number four pick is an excellent crime thriller that did incredibly well in Australia where it was produced back when it was released. In fact, one of the supporting actors in the movie was nominated for an Academy Award. Even though she's not really on screen very much at all in the movie, the performance is that dynamite in Animal Kingdom. Now they did turn this into an American crime series that actually did fairly well. It had a good run for about six years. You've also got amazing roles from Ben Mendelsohn, Joel Edgerton, and Guy Pearce in this movie. But the original Australian film actually features very little crime. You're very aware that the family you're following, they pull off bank heists and things like that, but you're seeing what their family life is like, and trust me, that's not as boring as it sounds. It's pretty high drama stuff, much more so than you would expect, and this goes into directions I never saw coming, and the movie hits you over the head with a couple of themes as well. It feels like a slow-paced movie where not a lot is happening, but once you realize what's actually unfolding in some of these conversations, whoo, there's some intense moments in Animal Kingdom and a dynamite finish. I mean, ultimately, just a killer flick. If you can be patient, there is a big payoff towards the end of Animal Kingdom. Okay, now I fully expect that most of the movies I've talked about so far are new to most of you watching, with the exception of my number three pick, the Grey. My guess is this is the most well-known movie on the list, but it's still such an excellent flick and I recently re-watched it and I had to put it at the number three spot. This is actually directed by Joe Carnahan, who's famous for movies like Narc, which I highly recommend, The A-Team, and Smoke and Aces. And as gritty as some of those movies are, The Grey is easily his grittiest and really one of the grittiest movies I've ever seen. If you've never seen this movie though, a small group of oil workers survive a plane crash in Alaska and they're stranded out in an incredibly hostile environment. I mean, a place that would be very difficult to survive as it is. And then they begin to be hunted by a large pack of wolves. This being one of the strongest, boldest, best man versus nature movies to have been released in the 21st century so far. One that actually did quite well when it was released, but I feel like has not held up with time nearly as well as it could and maybe should have. But my number two pick is one of the coolest, most badass sci-fi movies I've seen this century, and it was largely unnoticed back when it was released in theaters, despite the fact that it was really well-reviewed, Upgrade. Now this is actually written and directed by Lee Winnell, who's most famous for writing the early Saw movies. In fact, he's one of the people chained to a radiator in the first movie, but this is one of his greatest projects ever. In this movie, you follow a man who is paralyzed early on in the story, and he undergoes this new experimental surgery and is implanted with a brand new computer chip called STEM. But it doesn't just allow him to move, it can actually take control of his entire body, if he allows it to. That simple setup makes for some wild scenarios that are thoroughly entertaining to watch, insanely violent, but also very creative. You're watching the lead actor here, Logan Marshall Green, do like two performances at once. His body's having to do one thing and his face is having to react. It's really cool stuff. And then, like I said, the story itself actually exploits this simple setup very well. This is kind of like a modern day, darker, edgier version of the Twilight Zone. So if you're into that at all, and you somehow have never seen Upgrade, make it the first thing you watch off of this list and definitely be sure to catch it before it leaves Max because I've never seen it on there before. And then again, apologies to longtime subscribers, but my number one pick is one of my absolute favorite indie movies to recommend here on the channel. It has been for years, but I probably haven't recommended Mud in the last two years or so. This stars Matthew McConaughey as a man named Mud, who's stranded on a little island in the middle of the Mississippi River up in Arkansas when a couple of young boys stumble across him and decide to help him. 
Now, even though he's a very shady character, this actually ends up being kind of a heartwarming story. There's a coming of age thing. There's definitely a crime angle as well. And a lot of the themes are fairly subtle, making this feel very, very realistic. In fact, I've spent a lot of time playing in the woods in Mississippi when I was the same age as these boys. And so this movie really hit home for me in a lot of different ways. But Matthew McConaughey is fantastic in this movie. He's long been one of my favorite actors. I love his character. It feels incredibly authentic. It's just an incredibly well-rounded movie that I think really will appeal to most people watching. If you have not seen it and you're in the mood for just a solid, kind of slightly old-fashioned drama, Mud is going to be right up your alley. But that is the list. Thanks again to DarrenVanDam.com for, I guess, sponsoring this video. Go check it out. There's more designs than the ones I showed you here. Me and my wife put a lot of work into these, so at least go check out the designs, see what's over there. But I will keep making videos like these as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Max episode, and you will see me on the next one.